In 1964, U.S. President Lyndon Johnson signed the Wilderness Act, a law that protected millions of hectares of natural American landscape. Even more wilderness has been set aside since then in what has also been a model for other nations. And joining me right now is on assignments Philip Alexia, who went to Wyoming and checked it out himself. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, you know, the Wilderness Act ended up uh, being something that really uh, defines America, as we said. But, you know, this country is so much about it inspires us, the land inspires us, but it also really sustains us. And what the act ended up doing is it ended up creating, you know, a mechanism for people to advocate for the places they love. And that's why over the past 50 years, so much land has been added to the Wilderness Act and it's continuing to grow. Fantastic. So let's look at your piece and then we'll come back. All right. All right. This is a very happy and historic occasion for all who love the great American outdoors. September 12, 1964, President Lyndon Johnson announcing the signing of the Wilderness Act for the purpose of protecting, at the time, over three and a half million hectares of America's wildest and most beautiful places. Jamie Williams of the Wilderness Society says the signing of the act was a defining moment in the nation's history. But the great thing about the act is it created a mechanism for new places to be added. and. It, uh, the result of that is that it empowered Americans from all over the country to come together to advocate for the places they love most. Its scale was incredible um, to have one act that, you know, at that time set aside um, land forever. Gary Wilmot is the executive director of the Wyoming Outdoor Council. He says Wyoming has added another 0.6 million hectares of protected land since the act. You know, I think each year as a result, it makes these undeveloped places, these places where there are no roads, there are no bridges, there are no cabins, um, no bicycles. You know, those place are, places are increasingly rare. There are a good number of wildlife societies around the United States and wilderness training centers, such as the National Outdoor Leadership School, or Knowles, in Lander, Wyoming. Knowles is a leader in wilderness education, teaching students of all ages technical outdoor skills, leadership, and environmental ethics. Knowles celebrates its 50th anniversary in 2015. Director of Admissions and Marketing Bruce Palmer says protecting land is important because once it's gone, you can never get it back. And so there's always little nibbling at the edges that's always going on. Um, and so I think, we, I think we have to, and I think that's one of the things that Knowles does really well, I think, is by introducing our students to wilderness areas and backcountry areas. Um, once you've been there, you kind of have this sense of like, oh, this is really important to me and you want to protect it. Federally protected lands in the U.S. have grown more than tenfold since the Wilderness Act of 1964 Today, 44 million hectares across 44 states are protected, making the U.S. National Wilderness Preservation System the first and largest of its kind in the world. It took more than 60 drafts and eight years of work to get the act passed, but Gary Wilmot says it was worth every bit of the effort it took. You know, places that, you know, generations of, of my family beyond can be in a, a place just like the pioneers saw. Um, I think that's pretty incredible. So far, there are 758 protected areas in the United States. Philip Alexio, VOA News. And we're back with the man who belongs to that voice, Honor Simon's Philip Alexio. Uh, the people that you interviewed, uh, they do say that it was a defining moment half a century ago. But when you went there yourself and you saw that land yourself, how was that feeling like? Well, you know, it. it it's, it's a type of place, when you go to some of these places around the country, you can feel what you're seeing. You know, when you watch it on TV, you just see it. When you're there, you feel it, you absorb it. And I had never seen the cottonwoods and the aspens before. You know, that's the, the golden trees Beautiful. that dot the landscape all throughout the area, throughout the state of, of uh, Wyoming and certainly in uh, Yellowstone National Park. And, and then seeing the bison for the first time, you know, you see it on TV, but to see it for the first time is just, oh my God, there's the bison. And then the dragon's mouth, I think it is the dragon's mouth hot spring, which there at the end of the uh, report, you saw uh, it's a bubbling spring and it makes this noise like a dragon. <laughs> and 
it literally, you think there's a dragon in there, and that's why they give it that name. Because all the other hot springs to me are just kind of, you know, they're bubbling up a little bit. But that one was just so memorable, and of course, that's why I remember it now. So. Spectacular footage. You okay. got to go out there. We have to. We must. We'll all do right. a show from there. And we could ride horses. That would be amazing. I'd love to ride horses. <laughs> all right. Thank you so much for joining us. Honest Simon's Philip Alexia. Okay. All right.